I came across a beautiful data analysis of all StarCraft II Intel Extreme Masters Katowice World Championship games since 2016. So 2016 to 2023. Now let me just read you the first sentence here. Do you want to know why Pig and Harstam are the best Intel Extreme Masters Katowice players ever? Question mark. Yes, of course I want to know. Okay, maybe not the best, but there's a point to this claim. If you're curious about game metrics, if you want to know how much players have improved and who is the real goal of all IEM Katowice from 2016 to 2023, keep reading. This project will journey you through eight years of Intel Extreme Masters and uncover fascinating aspects and trends about StarCraft II and its players. And we're going to dive into this today. Now, before we get into any of the actual rankings, let's first take a look at the metrics here that are being used. There's four metrics that uh, this person who wrote this uh, decided to look at, and those are the actions per minute, the higher, the better, the screens per minute, the higher, the better, the spending quotient, the higher, the better, and the percentage supply cap, the lower, the better. Now, we'll explain over here what it is. APM is a measure of speed. It tracks how many actions were produced per minute by a player. This includes futile clicks, also known as spamming, employed by players to warm up their hands and try to stay as sharp as possible. Blah, de, blah, de, blah. We all know what APM is. SPM is yet another speed measurement. It tracks how many screens are processed per minute. Some of it, especially at the start of a game, could also be due to spamming. So every time a completely new screen get switched to uh, with, for example, camera hotkeys or by clicking on the minimap. This counts as a, an extra screen per minute. Then you have the spending quotient, which is a macro metric. It measures how good players are at acquiring resources as well as how good they are at spending them. More information can be found here. Uh, I'll link that in the description as well. And then finally, the most important one of all is the percentage supply cap. And that one is the lower, the better. So it means for how long a player was supply blocked during a game expressed as a percentage of the total length of the game. Besides these four metrics, we decided to include the average game length as this data can be relevant to understand how the game has changed over the years. Now that we got the metrics established, let's take a look at some graphs here, starting with the average APM graph over the year. So in 2016, the average APM was 254, in 2023, that is 290. That is an insane increase over, um, honestly, fairly little time in StarCraft II. Well, I, fairly a lot of time in StarCraft II. Um, the reason, by the way, why it starts in 2016 is because that's when Legacy of the Void got released. So um, you're only within one expansion, basically. Otherwise, Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm would be uh, very difficult. Now, moving over to screens per minute, you see 27.4 in 2016 to a whopping 36.5 in 2023. So once again, an absolutely massive increase. Then we get to the spending quotient and we see a similar thing here. The biggest jump from 2016 to 2017. This makes sense as in the first uh, year of Legacy of the Void, people obviously were figuring out build orders, how to optimize everything. So I, I think this is kind of expected. Uh, and then in the next few years, we still see a relatively big increase in that number. Uh, ending with once again, the most important graph here, the most important metric, the percentage supply cap. And that was uh, an average of 8.1% in 2016. And right now that is 7.6 in 2023. It was a little bit lower in 2021 and 2022, but it's all fairly close and a, a decent drop. But people have gotten gradually better over time, I guess. Quickly moving over to the part that everyone cares about the most, and that is the player analysis. Starting with the top five players for average APM. And Unsurprising, all of those are Zerp. Rainer, number one with 414 average APM. DRG, number two with 400 average APM. But this is a metric, personally, I don't give a crap about. All Zerg players cheat when it comes to this. Back in the day, Wings of Liberty, Heart of the Swarm, having high APM meant something. You know, back in my day, having good APM, that was, that was important. People, whoa, 300 APM, this guy's quick. Nowadays, it doesn't matter because Zerg players, they use the repeat rate, they increase the repeat rate on, on their keyboards and they just hold down that button and their APM, uh, despite them just holding down a button, spikes to like 1200 or so. They completely ruined it for everyone else. It's now a useless metric. This is not quite the case for Protoss and Terran players who still have very respectable APM most of the time. And for them, it actually means something. But every Zerg player and their mom has got freaking 500 APM average spiking up to 1900 while they're producing. 
garbage absolute garbage this 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 means nothing this this ranking if you're top five in this it's irrelevant keep that in mind okay just remember which ones we actually do care about the next one top five for average screens per minute now once again we see <laughs> absolute domination by zergs lumbo with the most screens per minute of 53.6 that's almost a screen per second which is freaking crazy that makes sense as well though larva inject and creep spread woo big freaking deal you just have to click all the time but you use your fancy little camera hotkey this has nothing to do with with the real speed this top five this is nice but personally once again i don't really care about it now now it's getting more exciting there's only two metrics remaining let's take a look who are best at for example the spending quotient so this is this is a macro thing here we see clam as number one clam is freaking insane mechanics ragnarok number two drg number three zanster the swedish zerg player at number four and solar at number five once again kind of zerg dominated so i feel like this metric once again is is I don't want to call it fake but it's a little bit screwed it, it is it is interesting to see clam up this freaking high uh it is it is quite difficult i assume to spend all your money as well as a terran because none of the other terrans are doing it protos is nowhere to be seen in any of these metrics you know is maybe that's the reason why we're losing but maybe not and then we go to the percentage supply capped now this is just an important one this is the foundation of all of rts if you want to build units if you want to build workers what do you need supply so you'd figure the player who is the least amount supply capped of all would be the greatest player of all time. Now let's have a look. Who is that legend? <gasps> Harstam with an average percent of supply capped of 4.5. And this is of people that have played more than or that have played more than nine games. So 10 games, at least 10 games over the past however many years in Intel Extreme Masters Katowice. Number one is Harstam. Number one is Real. Number three is Art. And number four is Clem, five Cyan. Now, what does this tell us? The one metric that people really should care about is dominated by Protoss players. And yet we don't win any Intel Extreme Masters. You tell me. So there you have it. The king of analogies, the Dutch captain himself is the best IEM Katowice player period in supply management at least and if we count all players including the ones who have played less than 10 total iem games then the first of the list is pig his average percentage supply cap is a mere 3.5 percent too bad he only played two total games we would have loved to see his impeccable supply management at work in more matches so there you have it uh we've covered the most important things of this massive paper if you do want to read it yourself um be sure to check it out there's a, a massive goat analysis as well spoiler alert Cyril is the goat according to uh this particular analysis uh, be sure to leave the guy some feedback but now let's take a look at some games of world's best intel extreme masters katowice player because he has a lot to show you indeed he does thank you so much for that analysis over there kevin and uh we're here right now the, the, the king of not being supply block decided to record some of his gameplay uh, of the latter. So if you're interested in not being supply block, be sure to stay tuned there. So we have a beautiful game against Nico Rock. Now, as of late, I have been trying to become a little bit more aggressive in the Protoss versus Terran matchup. Uh, I've realized that the best players in the world tend to be more aggressive. And I am not the best player in the world. And I am passive. So what I thought to myself is, well... Why don't I copy the best players in the world a bit more rather than trying to continue finding my own way? Yes, it's very fun to find your own way. But you know what's more fun than finding your own way and losing is copying someone else's way and winning. So I decided to look at a bunch of Max Packs replays, uh, copy whatever he is doing, and then make it my own by slightly changing the build order and uh, just doing things a little bit different you know you, you gotta give your own swirl to things now nico rack decided to also give his own swirl to things by opening up with an ebay block however because i was <laughs> pretty slow at scouting i actually found it immediately i love when this type of stuff happens when i'm being an idiot and it pays off you know this, it just feels so freaking good this is like not being capable of tying your shoelaces and then uh, tripping over your shoelaces and because of that 
uh, you're not getting hit by a car or something. You know, it's like one of these these lucky things. It shouldn't happen because you're an idiot. You survive. Now here, I scouted too late, and as a result, I find this eBay. God, am I happy with finding this eBay early because it's going to allow me to immediately take out the SCV there and pull a couple of workers downstairs and still have a decently timed nexus. I probably should have taken this second gas a little bit quicker. I do regret that I had plenty of money left over and I should have known that uh, that eBay wouldn't go down before I uh, before I had to take that assimilator, basically. I start with a quick adept chrono out across the map. Now, I haven't scouted because rather than scouting, I decided to use my worker to attack the eBay. So I am pretty blind. When it comes to information, I have very little. The only information right now that I have in the back of my head is that I never get supply block. That's good, <laughs> good information to have in the back of your head. Um, and it's something that Nico Rekt obviously knows as well, right? <laughs> he's, he's, imagine how scary it is when you start a game. You're playing against a guy that never gets supply block. <clears throat> like, whenever you get supply block, at, at you know, during a game, and you think, hmm, I wonder if my opponent is supply blocked, there's a very small chance that I would be supply blocked at the same time as well. Because only like 4% of the time, there's nothing. 4%, 4.5 I think it was actually, but we can round that down to 4. <laughs> that's how rounding percentages works. I uh, just go down. Here I do get supply blocked actually at 31. Oh no, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. Uh, this is one of those rare moments where we're 31 out of 31. Uh, as my nexus does finish that's the problem when you get your nexus built your your builder gets completely ruined now nico wrecked opened up with a reaper but he <laughs> ended up losing it to my adept which allows me to push across the map with these two uh with, with these two bad boys and i can deny a little bit of scouting because of that i can try to go up here uh, maybe i can uh, kill an scv i said deny scouting but i meant i deny some mining here uh, which is definitely what i want to do I'm seeing if I can wall this off because I'm afraid of Hellions. And while I'm looking on whether I can wall that off or not, I actually ended up uh, <laughs> I actually ended up losing both of my adepts. Not a great look there, Harkstam. But uh, with the amount of pylons that you're building, at least you won't be supply block anytime soon. I decided to open up with a robotics facility before I started Blink. And that allowed me to get a very fast observer out, as well as a reasonably quick prism as a follow-up. Now... Uh, my plan here is to go for a 3-gate blink attack and to try and deal some damage. That is really all I have in my mind right now. Uh, the one disadvantage that I do have with this particular build order, with the robo before the blink starting, is that you don't have blink when your opponent's mind drop moves in. But I have decent vision on the map. Uh, I can pretty much expect where he's coming from if he's going for a mind drop. And right now it doesn't really seem like he's coming out with a mind drop. I'm trying to scout in with this observer as well. Maybe I can get some some extra information. Although uh, right now, I mean, there doesn't really seem to be anything here, so I'm I'm not too worried. Warping a couple more stalkers. The timer is 4:51, so if a mind drop would have hit, it would have hit at this point usually. And as I say that, <laughs> I lose every single worker. Maybe the reason that I'm never supply blocked is because I just lose all of my workers to mine drops. <laughs> so 52 out of 70 right now. Way under capacity. That's the beauty of just constantly losing everything. Now, I am in some trouble right now, however. He has a tank out. He has a raven out. And all I have are some stalkers. Very little workers. Um, no real future when it comes to mining. No real future, honestly, when it comes to anything as my observer is being damaged as well. I need to figure out where he's going. So <clears throat> I want to get that observer back in position. And he just scanned me. So I kind of want to fake going into the main and then going in towards the natural. I've only seen one tank yet. If that tank is in the natural, I can snipe it. If that tank is in the main, I can perhaps kill the bunker. That's going to be my plan. So I don't see anything here. I figured out that the tank would be there, but I didn't get hit. So I decided not to blank blink in. Two depots are trying to block me as well, but uh, that doesn't really work. They're not done yet, and well, this didn't really work out for him at all. As I snipe a Marauder on top of that, and I am supply blocked. <laughs> 70 out of 70. Uh, but look at that. Pylon immediately finishes. There's no way that contributes to more than 4%. Absolutely not. He tries to snipe an Observer, and as a result, is out of position. I get a tank, and I continue building more and more Stalkers. My Worker Gun is actually looking pretty healthy at this point, which I do like. I take out this depot as well as I continue taking out more and more SEVs. Here go a couple of marines being taken out. And at this point, it's not as all in anymore, but it's still, you know, I, I definitely do need to deal some damage. I definitely want to deal some damage because 
I, I, well, I, I need to keep him at home for longer. I don't have charge yet. I don't have a forge. I don't have any immortals at home. Don't have a sentry. So my plan here is fairly simple. I'm going to send my prism in towards the main base. He is going to move there with all of his units. And I'll blink on top of the tank. And <laughs> what happens? Exactly what I thought would happen. Look how far forward I move with my head as well. Trying to get closer to the screen. No wonder I'm never supply blocked. Like my eyes are basically staring straight <laughs> into the supply count. <laughs> Holy crap, I'm far forward. It's like I'm about to take off over here. <laughs> <laughs> the flying Protoss. I've heard of the flying Dutchman before, but this is this is really pushing it. Now, he did manage to kind of break out. He has combat shield, he has Tim, has a couple of medevacs as well, and a bunch of marauders, which means that uh, my stalkers all of a sudden aren't so great anymore. I don't have any batteries in position. I don't have sentries. I, I literally don't have anything that, that matters at all here. I have a bunch of garbage units, which is, is not great. Now... Um, after sniping my opponent's raven, I did decide to go for something special, and that is a dark shrine, so I still have that in my back pocket. I blink back, he has stimmed multiple times, and the medifacts have not done a great job at healing, and as a result, his army is actually rather low, and uh, I can take out this tank. I mean, it cost me a couple of workers, but that's fine. Take out a medevac as I continue chasing this army. I need to get some vision with my observer. <clears throat> so I blink forward into this. About to pull a really cool move here as well, if I recall correctly. <laughs> you can see something heading towards my opponent's base on the middle map. Now, this is a very high level move, which is called the Emosec, in which you sacrifice an immortal. <laughs> I would not recommend this. <laughs> I would not recommend this at all. <laughs> this is a low level move. I copied from some of the rank roulette replays I saw. <laughs> Please don't do this. Um, what is a high level move though is going in with a prism with two DTs uh, while simultaneously moving over towards the third base. I thought he was going to be at the third base with a CC but he didn't have a CC yet so I go into the natural instead. He uses his scan in the main base to clear the DT over there and then he doesn't have a scan in the natural. I win the game, I win the points and this my dear friends was the greatest Starcraft 2 player of all time. And that is going to be it for this episode as well. I, did, I do hope that you enjoyed that high-level StarCraft action there in the end. I hope you enjoyed the data analysis. They were uh, uh, made by Fulvio, an uh, Italian person, I believe. I had a, a long call with him, uh, him painstakingly explaining every little detail that he, you know, about what he wrote, because I had absolutely no clue what any of it meant. Um, you know, I scanned through it myself. I was like, this seems difficult. I quit high school too early. Um, but I got there in the end with his help. So thank you so much for uh, giving your time to that full view. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check it out. There's a whole lot more in it than just me bragging about the fact that I do get supply block the least out of all Intel Extreme Masters Katowice players. Um, so yeah, uh, have a look at that. The goat analysis is pretty cool as well. And uh, yeah, I'll see all of you next time, I think. That's going to be it for me today. And uh, I'll see you all tomorrow for a new video. As always, of course, Arrivederci. Bye-bye.